Almighty God, we give you thanks for surrounding us as daylight fades with the brightness of the Vesper light. And we implore you of your great mercy that as you enfold us with the radiance of this light, so you would shine into our hearts the brightness of your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A girl restored to life and a woman healed. A reading from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly. My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. 
he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Here is the reading. One way to experience the biblical text in a deeper and more meaningful way is to put ourselves in the shoes of those in the text. Please join me in doing that for a few minutes. We will focus on the three main char characters, Jairus, the unnamed woman who we'll call Jane Doe, so that she has a name, and of course, Jesus, bringing things all together in the end. Jairus is a ruler of the synagogue. He's highly respected and a member of society, a dedicated follower of the Jewish law. The unnamed woman, Jane Doe, however, is a diseased woman and as such is considered unclean in the Jewish world. Because of her uncleanliness, she is totally cut off from the rest of society, forbidden to be anywhere near those who are considered clean. Jairus, in position of authority. Jane Doe, a social outcast. Jairus, the social insider looked up to. Jane Doe, a social outcast ostracized and ignored. Jairus seen as whole upholder of the faith. Jane Doe blamed for sin in the world. Jairus approaches Jesus for healing. Jane Doe sneaks up behind Jesus for healing. Now that we've looked at some of their differences, let's go a little deeper by putting ourselves in their shoes. Today, we're going to do that by exploring experiences in our own lives. Let's begin. First, Jairus. I invite you to think of a time in your life when you felt respected, loved, and admired. For example, when I was young, I was looked up to by my family and my friends and school and classmates because I did well in school, I was very athletic and strong. I wasn't one of the popular kids, but I was respected and re admired and it felt good. Now, Jane Doe, I invite you to think of a time when you felt unclean, looked down upon, rejected. You felt unworthy of love, acceptance or healing. For example, I'm the youngest in my family, and as such, I was considered the baby of the family. Daddy's little girl. Coming from a big family, eight of us living at home at the time, I didn't see that as a good thing. I had no control over how I was treated, getting my way and getting toys I wanted more often than the others. And when I did, it did happen when I got toys. It didn't happen very often because we were poor. But it happened enough 
that my brothers and sisters definitely took notice. One day, some of my brothers and sisters were outside playing together. I went out to join them. And when I did, they sneered at me and said, go away, we don't want to play with you. You get your way, you're spoiled. Go spend your time with your daddy. Since my family was a, my whole world at that point in my life, I felt totally rejected and alone. I know my experiences in some respects aren't as extreme as Jairus or Jane Doe, and perhaps yours aren't either. But I think it reflects the reality of us all as human beings. Things happen to us that profoundly affect us and threaten us at some point in our lives. Like Jairus, a respected man of faith and synagogue leader, his daughter is very ill, even to the point of death. Like Jane Doe, outcast, rejected, and ignored, only because she had a disease the doctors couldn't heal. It seems that the lives of Jairus and Jane Doe are worlds apart, and by the world standards, they are. However, the situations they find themselves in, and at that moment, quickly closes the gap. Imagine Jairus, a temple leader, a society insider, feeling alone and devastated that his daughter is on her deathbed and he has no control over it. Imagine Jane Doe, a total outcast from society because of her illness, something she has no control over, left alone, totally rejected and miserable. Both Jairus and Jane Doe, they had no options left. They had no option other than turn to Jesus. He was their last hope. And they both had faith that Jesus could and would heal. And Jesus did not disappoint. Let us recite together the song of Mary called the Magnifica. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Oh, he has looked with favor of his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel. For he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers to Abraham and his children forever. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Collect for the Day Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things for which our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. 
give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all sorts and conditions of human beings. O God, the Creator and Preserver of all, we humbly beseech you for all sorts and conditions of people, that you would be pleased to make your ways known unto them, your saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for your Holy Church universal, that it may be so guided and governed by your good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to your fatherly goodness all those who are in many ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or spirit, that it may please you to comfort and relieve them according to their several needs, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let us say this prayer of blessing by John Rayner. When darkness, when evil darkens our world, give us light. When despair numbs our soul, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, lift us up. When doubts assail us, give us faith. When nothing seems sure, give us trust. When ideals fade, give us vision. When we lose our way, be our guide that we may find serenity in your presence and purpose in doing your will. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.